Porter, the Lander County Commissioner meeting, Board of um, Town Board of Battle Mountain, and Austin Board of County um, County Highway Commissioners, February 13th, 2020. So, with it called to order, can I have Art? You want to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we're going to go ahead and have a moment of silence. So, get started. Lander County Commissioners may break for lunch from 12 to 1.15 uh, 1 p.m. Any agenda item may be taken out of order and may be combined and considered by the, pub by the public body. At, um, and items may be pulled or removed from the agenda at any time. Commissioners reports on meetings, conferences, seminars attended. Patsy, on seminar, meetings. Thank you. Uh, yes, I did have a couple meetings. On the 23rd of January, I attended the Kingston Town Board meeting. Um, they're busy working on their budgets, of course, and had some concerns on actually safety regarding a light over their new mailboxes. But I don't think we can get that in for this year's budget if they could because Nevada Energy doesn't put them in anymore, and so we're busy looking at several other ways, but um, they were going to try. On the 31st of January, I attended the NACO meeting, uh, which was in Clark County. Uh, um, actually, we had a couple of our other commissioners, too, our representatives and alternates there, so I'll leave some of that, but we did have the installation of officers, and I reported on who they were last time, Jim French, of course, being our president um, this year, and Marilyn Kirkpatrick, which is the president-elect, and then our vice president, um, which is Bob Lucy out of Washoe County. Uh, we were busy working on a lot of different things. One, of course, is our, our priorities for our legislative conference, and that's coming up in Washington, D.C. on the 28th of February through the the 4th of March, so um, we will be having a local attendance for us on that. That's an extremely important one um, and gives you a real nice background for NACO. On February 10th, we had an Austin Airport Advisory Board meeting, and uh, actually we had a full board. All three members were there, um, again working on the budget and some problems that we've got out there that need to be addressed with fencing and safety and some things like that. So. Um, We'll be working on that as it goes on. That's all I have. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Art? I went to the NACO meeting. Um, thank you. I went to the <laughs> NACO meeting, and uh, <clears throat> one of the things that were discussed were the same things that have been discussed for a long time, <clears throat> grazing, fires, those different things. Um, I guess the one thing that stuck out in the meeting was the increase of uh, insurance premiums for fires. Ours went up $50,000. I think Humboldt's went up 200000 whatever it was. Uh, Jim French is, is looking in, into this. Um, <clears throat> probably the most significant thing about the, about the trip was I stopped in Beatty. And we had a guy that used to come to Battle Mountain and sell military surplus. And, <clears throat> you know, people that asked me, you know, where's this guy at? It's been gone for years. So I stopped and talked to him, and he told me that to have a peddler's uh, license in Battle Mountain, he was told he needed an FBI background check. So that didn't sound right. I called Ron. I called Anna. I think we got that situation straightened up. So... He may be backed up selling military <coughs> surplus, which I don't think he ever left it empty. And the last thing I want to report on is the rec center. I followed the junior high basketball teams around last Saturday. 
And I gotta tell you, there was more excitement and energy in that rec center than you would find in an NBA game. Those fans and those kids, they yelled, screamed, and hollered, and those kids played their hearts out. And we need to give a big shout out to Coach Burt Ramos. Uh, you know, working full time and, and being a coach and not associated with the schools, that's, that's a tough position. So, that's the end of me. Very good, thank you. I attended the hospital board meeting, um, just standard um, stuff. Their construction is all done and they don't have any more phases planned at this time. So, they're, they're kind of just a, at a stand um, standstill, just doing regular uh, meetings, um, nothing too stands out that's reportable. Convention and tourism, the meeting lasted like 15 minutes, so it really wasn't much. We just went over the budget, had to sign some bills, and then I went attended my first um, LIDA meeting, and I was a little confused on how the whole process worked with that meeting, so I sat by and kind of watched <laughs> to see how, how it all played out, and so I'm, I'm sure in the future I will have more to report on that, but this time I was more of an observer than a participant within the meeting, so, Brian. Nothing. Judy. Okay, so on February 6th, I did attend the uh, Livestock Advisory Board meeting, and that was pretty much um, business as usual. I, oh, well, backing up a little bit, January 31st, I attended the NACO meeting in Vegas. Um, so bear with me, I'm trying to decipher my notes. It made sense when I took them, but... <laughs> We had an update on the uh, county opioid lawsuits in Nevada, and um, actually no formal offers have been made or settled yet, and none of the cases have gone to trial in Nevada. Um, there's a trial date set for 2021, um, so it's still kind of an ongoing thing. Um, there's a lot more into it. Um, like I said, trying to trying to make notes, but you know the opioid lawsuits are progressing. I guess um, there's so there was an update on the um, there's some proposed rule making on the uh, NEPA Act, and they're proposing revisions that actually really could impact the counties. Um, basically, it's it's changing a time frame and excluding projects that have mineral, uh, minimal federal funding um, and basically limit the amount of effects. So that's going to be, you know, NACO is going to be watching that to, to see how that progresses. Um, let's see what else. Oh, another interesting thing that um, I thought was really great. So uh, Marilyn Kirkpatrick is the chairman for the Clark County Commission. And Marilyn is, is a really fantastic lady. She sits on a lot of boards in Clark County, and she's chairman of those. I mean, super, super busy, but she's also really involved in the state. So she has um, a bill before the um, legislature, or well, um, the House, I think, um, at the federal level, for permanent funding for PILT. And that's a really big thing because every year they, um, you know, try to take away the PILT money. And if they can, if, if our government can pass legislation that says that they will permanently fund PILT, that would be a big sigh of relief for, for all these counties. Um, so then on uh, the 11th, we had uh, LEPSI, a LEPSI meeting. It was pretty much standard uh, business, although I do want to um, pretty much invite everybody. Our next meeting, March 10th, we are having a presentation from Jessica Dugan. She's with Bar Engineering. She's been working with, um, well, it's a Tri-County Hazardous Mitigation Plan. And it's kind of one of those things that the more people that can get involved in this, the better. So uh, that will be at 530 in the community room on the 10th. And if you know of anybody that would be interested in going, um, please feel free to invite them because, like I said, it's, it's working on the, the hazard, hazardous mitigation and <clears throat> as a community, you know, we need to be kind of aware of a lot of these things too. So, so that's it. Very good. Thank you. Staff reports on meetings, conferences, and seminars.
Uh, it's in your books, but we're up again to lose our SECRT uh, tax waiver from the state. Um, I have to submit that prior to the 20th, which is before the next commission meeting, and I'm uh, pretty sure you want me to consider or to go ahead and submit our waiver, so I'll uh, work on that. Um, we met with the Watt Group, which is a solar company. I have a uh, booklet here if you'd like to look it over. They are going to come to the county uh, and propose at this solar field south of, of uh, Battle Mountain here. Um, I also I attended the NACO conference on February 7th. It had to do with a uh, water resources plan. If anybody's interested in that, it was a good, uh, a good uh, meeting that we had. And, it, uh, and we have a pretty good plan in place already. I also got the Nevada Division of Minerals report, if anybody's interested in that as well. I only have one bound copy, but you're welcome to take it and uh, read over it. The Austin Highway 50 project is going to be a, a pretty fast-paced project throughout the summer. So we had a meeting to talk about the ADA accessible sidewalks and so forth in Austin, and it sounds like uh, that's, that's pretty much in place. I have, don't have a whole lot to worry about with that. Um, we had a meeting scheduled to meet with Amtrak to talk about the, the Amtrak stop in Battle Mountain. That was postponed, and it was rescheduled till the 24th. So um, hopefully I'll have, I'll have a little more information at our next meeting to talk about where, uh, where we're at with that potential Amtrak stop. We have uh, the first week of March. We're going to be talking a lot about our lands bill, getting ready to, for our folks in D.C. to present it to the House. Hopefully move forward on that pretty quick. And then we had some conflicts with the budget workshop, so we had to change the dates to March 18th and 19th. March 18th and 19th um, for our budget workshop. So if, if that's not going to fit in schedule, please let me know, but that's what we're looking at right now. That's it. Yes. Um, so how is that going to work? Um, the same times, 9 to 5, 9 to 5, both days? Wh whatever you guys would like. Whatever you guys would like. Do you want to change that, or are you all right with that passing? Okay. All right. All right. Moving on for public comment for non-agendized items only. Persons are invited to submit comments in writing and or attend and make comments on any non-agendized item at the board meeting, if any. The, the uh, discussion of those comments are at the discretion of the board. All public comment may be limited to three minutes per person, again, at the discretion of the board. Reasonable restrictions may be placed on the public comment based upon time, place, and manner, but comment, public comment based upon viewpoint may not be restricted. So I'm going to move on to the consent item. Now, on, on this part of my... Yes. Oh, yes. And I've been doing notes, so I try to remember that, you guys. I'm so sorry. So with that, is there anybody who has any public comment? I'm sorry. All right. So. So. I'm going to cut one of the consent items. Am I required, Brian? To oh, I'm not sure. My on this? Gosh, Ted. So under the consent agenda part, am I required to read the par that entire paragraph, or do we just go ahead and go into the consent items? Okay. So all first the consent items, all matters listed under the consent agenda are considered routine and may be uh, acted upon by the board of county commissioners with one action without extensive discussion. Any member of the board or any citizen may request that an item and be taken from the consent agenda discussed and acted upon separately during the meeting. Consent agenda materials are available at the Lander County Clerk's uh, Office for viewing and copies are available for a nominal fee charge. So, number one, approval of February 13th, 2020 ag agenda notice. Number two, approval of October 10th, 2019 meeting minutes. Approval of October 24th, 2019 meeting minutes. Number four, approval of November 7th, 2019 meeting minutes. Number five, approval of November 25th, 2019 special meeting minutes. 
approval of December, I think it's number six, approval of December 5th, 2019 meeting minutes. Number seven, approval of December 19th, 2019 meeting minutes. Number eight, approval of January 9th, 2020 meeting minutes. Number nine, approval of January 23rd, 2020 meeting minutes. Number 10, approval of and payment of bills. So are there other than on number 10, removing um, the checks for Brian that are um, number 206475, 206558, 20667 for Brian's employer. And then for Patsy, check number 206471. Do, do we have all of the um, minutes from these meetings? No. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda to include number one, the February 13th agenda notice, and number two, the October 10th meeting minutes. All right. Is there a second? I'll second that. All, right. all in favor? No. Aye. 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 All right. All right. So then we'll move on to the payment of bills uh, for Brian's employer for the, these three checks. Is there a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion, we pass. All right, have a second? I'll second. Oh, very good, um, all in favor? No. Aye. 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 Opposed? And I abstain. All right, <coughs> so then on check number 206471 for Patsy, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. A second? Second. All right, we're all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And I am abstaining, thank you. All right, very good. Um, Kathy, yes. can you check one more? You may. Okay. Is this gonna take up those motions about when we have? I think we, we probably have to ask them. So every time we speak, no matter if it's in the eight, just press it, even though, okay. I'll make sure we right. have it. All right, very good. It's gonna be a little bit to learn how to remember to do that. All right, so, all right, going over to um, number one for county manager for possible action to approve, disapprove the abolishment of the purchase order system within Lambert County. No, we need to make I'm a, sorry. we need to approve bills. We, we need to approve, approve the rest of the bills. Oh, the rest of the bills. I'm sorry. There is. All right, so I need um, to a motion to approve the remaining bills. So moved. All right, a second. I'll second. All, right, all in favor? Aye. 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 So, all right, so I'm now I'm going to go into number one, <laughs> county manager for possible action to approve, disapprove the abolishment of the purchase order system within Lander County. Uh, we did, I did uh, speak about this earlier that uh, we discussed this with our auditors as well as with the fiscal officer. And without a purchasing agent, we really don't need a PO system in place. Um, it's just a, an extra step that's not needed. So I wanted to bring it to the board to see about just abolishing the whole system. We had a department head and elected official meeting um, to discuss it. There's, there's no issues. Um, with any of the department heads or the elected officials. Some are going to keep records within their own office, but we, do need, we don't need to keep the PO system in place. So that's what I'm asking for. Just so is there any discussion? I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the abolishment of the purchase order system within Lander mm -hmm. County. Can I have a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, aye. Opposed? Nay. Okay. All right. So, um, for possible action to approve, disapprove the Lander County Emergency Operation Plan letter of obligation. This is for LEPSI. Uh, it's their annual requirement to um, post the public service announcement in the newspaper and to also, uh, for them to remain in, com in compliance, to have this letter of promulgation that we do annually in order, like I say, in order to keep the uh, LEPSI in compliance, um, and then for the um, chair or vice chair to sign. Mm -hmm. Okay, any discussion? Okay, all right, 
discussion? Is there a motion? I'll make the motion to approve the uh, <clears throat> uh, Lander County Emergency Operations Plan letter of promulgation and authorize the chair to sign. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Number three, for the possible action uh, approval, disapproval, um, the proposal from the Aramid Care Network, the na uh, nationwide coverage at the amount not to exceed $66,031.70. So this, this was uh, discussed earlier with, with some confusion about how the uh, people are flown out um, of the county or how they're covered within this, with this uh, membership that we have. And what, what this does, currently, our membership um, allows people to, with Lander County zip codes to be flown out of Lander County. This additional cost would cover the county nation, nationwide. And I've asked uh, Gina from um, Air Care Med Network to come up and speak any questions that you guys, or answer any questions that you guys might have. Okay. Can you turn your speaker on and state your name, please? Gina Fascinetti, Membership Manager, Air Medcare Network. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, yes, so the, the full MSP is similar to what they have in both Elko and White Pine right now. What that does is uh, covers them for all of the bases across the United States, all 320 some odd plus bases. So if they were shopping in Elko and got flown out of there or traveling somewhere and a base took them, they would not get balance billed. Um, another benefit to that is uh, currently in your partial MSP, if the people are uninsured, um, they can get billed for the Medicare allowable rate, which you know drops the bill from whatever it is. The the case here that we're dealing with right now is sixty seven thousand down to like eleven thousand. The person was getting billed, and we're working on paperwork right now to get that additional amount written off um, because this particular person is unemployed and we do have mercy billing. But that goes away if you have a full MSP. They don't get billed the Medicare balance billed rate if they don't have insurance as well. So that's another benefit for it. Um, also, the franchise agreement that we sent over for your review to help cover the um, mental health patients that you guys were concerned about getting flown out of the area covers that as well. So that's some benefits that you guys have expressed concerns about that the full MSP would take care of. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, any other questions about that? My question is, since we have the other coverage right now, when, when is this actually effective? Uh, oh, sorry. So what we did is prorated it uh, to take off the cost of the coverage that you guys paid for now. To start it if you were to vote on it now the full msp would take effect whenever you guys vote for it and they'll just prorate um what you have left on your partial that you've already paid okay i have a question <clears throat> um this additional coverage to cover <clears throat> people from lander county and other areas mm -hmm. That's available to them for a cost right it is yes because i know i signed up i think for 10 years for $300 or whatever it was. It is. They can upgrade it for um, yeah, the cost Yeah, you can upgrade it. So uh, This was just substantially discounted compared to what they had to pay. Um, the cost that it came up with like per residence, I think it was, was less than like $15 for a household um, yeah. as opposed to what they had to pay. What, what was our cost before? Uh, $6,500 $6, $6, $6, $6, $6, $6, $6, $6, $6, is what it was, or $6,800 from within the county. Um, Lander County zip code residents, right? But they had to be flown out of out Lander of County. our hospital, out of yes. well, out of, out of Lander County. County, out of Lander yeah. County. Correct. So we do scene calls as well. So, so I mean, if, if, they're if wrong. there if there was an accident somewhere <coughs> on the mountain, the helicopter would come and pick them up in Lander County. Correct. If it was in okay. Lander, yes, they would not be balanced. They're going to come get them either way. The only difference is whether or not they get that. When we again. started this, I I thought that anything extra that was offered was up to the individual to purchase. That's why I, I purchased the extra coverage. And that is always an option. Um, Commissioner, a lot of the uh, reasons that um, the other counties have decided to do it is because it also keeps a lot of money in the county. Um, just the two that I'm helping on paperwork with right now, if this, they wouldn't have had this coverage, say they were on their way to Elko and this happened right over the county line, they would have gotten yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, that's in this case, sixty-three thousand dollars. They would have been sent into West Plain, Missouri. That wouldn't have stayed in here for one flight. Sixty. So a lot of the uh, the other 
counties have taken that into consideration too because it does keep a lot of money in the county when they're not having to send that out for medical bills. Yeah, so it's we, protecting them financially as well. As long as we have the kind of funding we do, um, I'm willing to help. But my only problem is the, the citizen's responsibility for the extra coverage. I'm just mentioning that. So um, <clears throat> this is nationwide. It is, yes. We if, are the largest membership based uh, play in the country. But if I'm in um, Illinois, mm -hmm. then I can get flown out any, you know, it covers me. You can. We have over 320 bases across the United States that are in the Air Medicare network. If any of our bases take you, you're covered. No money out of pocket. Okay, so I'm curious if there is um, a rate for just Nevada. No, there is not. Uh, that was one thing that we discussed because we knew that was kind of where you guys were going to cover just Nevada for a municipal site plan, and unfortunately it doesn't work like that. It's partial for the counties only or a full MSP for the okay. entire footprint. And I guess you mentioned something that, that I didn't quite understand talking about uh, Medicare. Mm -hmm. Is um, So if, if the county cover this insurance and somebody on Medicare um, gets flown out, and the Medicare is only going to cover so much. Sounds like there was a balance that you would cover. Uh, no, let me clarify that. So okay. um, currently how it is right now in the partial municipal site plans that they have, if a, a person has zero insurance, so if they hadn't signed up for their Medicare or Medicaid even, um, then we can, they can bill them the Medicare allowable rate. Uh, and we don't run into that a ton because people are all supposed to have insurance. Um, but if they don't, for whatever reason, uh, they can get billed the Medicare allowable rate. Um, in this particular case, like this gentleman is unemployed and stuff, and so it's just going to be um, a lot more paperwork, which we're going to have to help him with to get that fee waived as well. Uh, but yes, they will get a Medicare allowable rate if they have zero insurance with the partial MSP. If you had a full municipal site plan, like the one that we're proposing right now, that goes away even if they have no insurance, they do not get balance billed, not even the Medicare allowable rate. Yeah, see, that's what kind of throws me is I figured we're paying for this for the citizens of Flander County, that they should get billed absolutely nothing. And, and most people saying, don't. If they have any kind of insurance, well, they will not get balance billed at all. If they have zero insurance, they will get billed the Medicare allowable rate. Which yeah, see, and I don't agree with that. I think that is just kind of, you know, when, when we're paying for coverage for the citizens, mm -hmm. we're paying for coverage regardless if they have insurance or not, and they should not be billed a penny. Yeah, I completely understand. That's just unfortunately not how the, uh, the municipal site plans are written. Um, so it took it, you know, from, like I said, his was, I think, 63000 down to eleven uh, that he owed. So it was a hugely substantial savings, even him having no insurance. Um, and in this particular case, he would have been eligible to sign up for Medicare or Medicaid anyway uh, at any time during, like, this process before that and just did not. Um, a lot of times in that case is when they sign up, it'll retroactively pay for it anyway. So it's just a matter of helping him with paperwork, which is where we step in and try to do that at well, this point anyway. And I appreciate that. I just, like I said, is it was kind of a little misconception there that, you know, when we're telling our citizens that, you know, we have this coverage, it's not going to cost you a penny, and then come to find out. So. Yeah, I do understand. Uh, it is in the clause in the contract, um, and I'm terribly sorry I wasn't actually at the meeting uh, for the commissioners for when you guys reviewed the contract, apparently. Um, but it, it is in there. Have you guys went through and read the terms in there? I mean, there's there's like eight of them. Uh, but it's on file at the recorder's office. Like, it would be, I mean, if I could answer any questions on that, I would be more than happy to because apparently there's been some confusion on exactly this contract and the terms of it. Uh, I have a question. So if, say, one of our um, employees are in Boston and they get picked up by another, your helicopter is not the one that picks them up. This is of no service to them, correct? Correct, yeah. It has to be in our network. However, um, what we do is we send out the membership packages. Those are the stickers, the keychains, all that stuff. Again, we are the largest in the country, so if you were ever going to get a membership, odds are ours are probably going to cover you somewhere. Um, but what we try to do is give them the membership cards, the decals for the automobile, keychains, so that if they're ever nonverbal, um, the first responders know that they have a preferred provider. So we do everything in our power to make sure that even if they're not able to be like, oh, I'm a member of this, this is who I would like called, we still try to make sure they're with us. Oh. <coughs> um, availability. Mm -hmm. What happens if you're not available? There's no coverage? Um, in this, uh, if well, you don't have an aircraft available and the doctor has to go to some other agency, some other company, 
cover. That, that's pretty rare, but yeah, if they were already out on a flight or down for maintenance or weather was imperative and it wasn't no, safe no, to I'm fly. No, no, I'm talking about leaving the hospital right here <clears throat> and you're not available. All your aircraft's gone and somebody else is in. Are we covered? If they fly with us is the time that they're covered. I'm not covering okay, a bill for that, any other aircraft. They fly However, you, that covered. said, um, we have several bases around the area that we could pull aircraft from to serve you, and no one else does. Okay, so availability is 100%. No, it is not. It's never going to be 100%. If it's not safe to fly because of inclement weather oh, or no, we I'm have a maintenance issue with that. an aircraft, I said then they're not going to come. I said availability of If aircraft. they're available and we get called out, they're not already on a patient flight and, and every they're they're absolutely going to come, yes. So you have enough aircraft to cap, to cover three or four accidents in Lander County? Um, we could pull from other bases, yes. Uh, okay, you can pull. Here's what I would say is that we have been covering you guys for several years. Are you having a problem with availability that I don't know about? Yes. Okay. Can I come up and state your come name, on, please? Kim Schott, Lander County EMS. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so I do have a couple questions regarding this. Um, I'm not exactly sure how our dispatch is working. Maybe Ron can help us out. Um, who is our first line that dispatch will call when we are en route to an accident? Um, yes, we do have a problem with availability. Um, they do have a line they go down to. They go. I mean, you could call in for sure and say, hey, we want um, air med care. Um, well, they're not available. And this has been the situation. So we go down and maybe it's MedX Air 1 next because we're having a, an issue with that as well because MedX Air 1, as you know, has issued two Lander County residents for a, you're not going to get a bill. You're not going to see any paperwork. You're not going to see anything. Don't get a membership anywhere else. You don't need to. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with that because if they are not available, we're now calling Care Flight, which is not under your umbrella. Care Flight is. Okay. Is that out of Reno, the one you're talking Remza? about? Remsa. Okay, yes. Yeah. Remsa. Yes, okay. that is okay. under our umbrella. Because. So two I out of the three you're getting... calling are ours, is what okay. you're saying so far, right? Well, right. So okay. um, the issue is we get whatever's available. Being is our location is so remote. Sure. Down in Southern Lander County, you know, we want the quickest one. We may not be able to wait until you have one available. We need somebody coming now because it's an hour or more before a flight gets to us. The problem we're having, and this was an issue with Care Flight recently, and I've had people come to me because I get all the flat for it, is, all right, MedX Air One saying it's free, Lander County saying it's free, but you flew me out care flight or flew my wife out and now we're stuck with this bill because we don't have any insurance and now it's all my fault <laughs> so right. um when did care flight come in effect with you guys uh we've had care flight for a lot for a long because time are they getting bill the bill because not, they didn't have insurance or uh, that may very well be that's that's the issue i have as well with the commissioners is because um because medx is claiming Every resident in Lander County and our surrounding counties will not see a bill, will not see any paper whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we do have some residents that are not covered by insurance. I've, I've got a question. Do we need to develop, a, establish a dispatch protocol? That's actually what the franchise agreement would do. So the franchise agreement that comes with these full MSPs that we talked about makes us first call uh, all the time. Um, and then, of course, if we weren't available, it would be closest appropriate, which the only other one here is Air Medics 1. Okay, so, how, how do we dispatch? Do we go through the sheriff? Sheriff's office do. When we are en route to a 911, we say, can you get us a helicopter on standby or en route? Right. Um, now I don't know what their first line is to call. They'll ask us, who do you want us to call, and if the patient has a preference. But... My response always is the first one that can get there. I mean, yeah. um, the closest one is is my answer, just for patient safety and patient care. Um, however, we have had the issues with REMSA not covering, and then this so you're other talking one, about ground ambulance for REMSA? No, we're talking about flight. Okay, so care flight. Because REMS is the ground ambulance portion. Yeah, but correct? isn't it run by Ram REMSA? Um, they own REMSA, which is the ground portion. Care Flight uh, okay. owns so Care Flight. Flight. Yes. So care, okay, mm -hmm. so yes, Care Flight. Um, and again, if they get a bill or they have um, a problem with that with anyone in our umbrella, because sometimes it works like that. You know, sometimes it takes a while for this to work and they'll get a bill. They simply call. We help them with that. Um, they're 
you know, they're really great about helping them out with that. But again, um, unless it's a situation that I look into that I can help them, I don't know per, right, like why right. they would have got a bill. Mm -hmm. uh, with municipal site plans, especially sometimes people get a bill because it's not like a normal membership where they get assigned a household ID and we have their name and their phone number and everything in there. It's just saying, oh, well, they cover this county. So typically they'll get a bill. They'll call us and say, hey, my county covers this for us. We'll say, okay, can we get a proof of your address, like a piece of mail, a tax return or something? And then they'll write it up at that point. So them getting a bill in the mail is not uncommon um them having to actually pay the bill would be uh, but in this particular situation you know you'd have to i would need a little more information than what you're telling me um but basically what you're saying is two out of the three that are in the rotation that get called are ours and covered under our area um the other one is air medics one who uh for the time being anyway is saying that you guys are just covered right so that's the only issue i'm i'm gonna have to be able to tell my people if we're telling them our first line is to call um especially if they're uninsured patient, our first line is to call Air Med Care, and if they're gonna get a bill, they're And again, say, if it was a full MSP, it? they would not get one. The only time that they're gonna get that Medicare allowable rate is if it's a partial municipal site plan in a county. Both the MSPs that are in effect right now for Elko and White Pine, they don't get a bill at all, even if they have zero insurance. The only time this comes into effect is if you only have a partial one. I need to ask Keith a question. Has anyone in Lander County that's come to you to pay the bill, have they been responsible for the bill or have we covered it? We have, I'm aware of two that were not, that they ended up getting bills uh -huh. and I've referred them to Gina and my understanding is, is they've been taken care of. They are getting, yes, taken okay. care of. So there were two the of and they were, taken, as, as far as I know, they were taken care of. Okay, how and, and that no was quite expense. simple, just a matter of paperwork. Again, like proving an address, you know, for them to write the bill up. Um, how, how long is this present policy? When was the termination date for this present policy? The one we're in now, I believe, is in April. It April? It expires it in is, April. Yes, I believe yes. so. Just a comment back to uh, what Kim was talking about. You know, if they were uninsured, you'd want to call them. We're going... But many times, when you know it's a rollover, you know what's happening, right. you call that way before you even yes, get there. And that's know. not anything that EMTs ask. Excuse me, what's your insurance? No. You don't even know that till they're in the back of your, of your no, ambulance, usually. Or, or we get that. So we with get this, that. what we're saying is any resident from Lander County, anywhere they're picked up, is going to be covered with your company. Period. Right. Whether uh, with, or not they have insurance. With the misunderstanding that we had last mm -hmm. time, we thought that was true, but then we find out it's only if you transported them from Lander County. And now we understand that this one, if the commissioners decide to go that extra amount and pay for that, um, again, it takes, it, it isn't anything that EMTs even have to be concerned about, but it certainly is nice to know if they start talking to you about it on the way, and very often they do, um, you say, but you don't even know if they're a resident of Lander County when you get out to that. Right, no, but I have had people near death telling me, am I going to get billed for this? Please don't call a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't call a helicopter. That's going to ruin my life. I can't pay for that. No, you're, you're absolutely just right. just for some but, but you honest. don't know that till you're on scene right. and sometimes in the back mm -hmm. you know, later. But then again, you don't even know, like I said, if they're a resident from Lander County. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so a couple of things I should also clarify, just for some history on this. When we were contacted about doing this municipal site plan for you guys, when we got called to see if this was even an option, I believe you guys were in one that you had paid for with Air Medics 1. Is that correct? No. We never. We oh, did. you didn't? We, okay. We did not pay for um, any anything else other than what with, they came okay. and presented, but... We oh, but not. you did not go that forward with them. Okay, so we got contacted about uh, doing one for you guys, and the, the full was always an option. So um, the partial is what everybody decided to go forward with at the time. So this full municipal site plan has always been like an option on the table. It just was not the one that you guys chose. Um, and secondly, I think we should clarify as far as REMSA and CARE um, credit. Uh, that's interesting. We actually will pretty soon here have a... Um, a membership plan for even the ground ambulance if people wanted that for care credit we've been in the process of working that out for about a year um so right now we have the the flight portion of it covered um but pretty soon we'll have ground coverage on that as well okay. now the upgrade with the um if you are not insured can you call air med care 
and get the upgrade to be flown out wherever and wherever. You could get the upgrade for the full um, membership. However, I think because of the partial MSP in the county, they would still build them in Medicare level rate. Okay. Kim, you made up my mind for me, telling me that you have people near death asking about a bill. If you look at it this way, commissioners, uh, you know, what they're asking you for, as, and I realize it's not a, an insubstantial amount that they're asking for these MSPs, but at the same time, if you look at these bills historically, it's about one flight that they're asking you to pay to cover every resident household for the entire year in the full footprint. So when you look at it like that, it actually does keep a lot of money in the counties and protects the patients financially as well. I think that's why the other counties have decided to go I need to ask with Keith's it. question. Do we have the money? Yes. So I, I see what Commissioner Clark was getting at before and with some of what Kim has stated. You know, it is kind of, I know it's a long shot sometimes. You can't always predict what's going to happen. Correct. Um, but as Kim has stated, a lot of times, you know, you're, they're not going to get um, air med care. And, and maybe it might be an affiliate of yours or something, but n not necessarily. So if by, you know, whatever chance there is not an ambulance or a, a, a flight available, we've paid for this insurance mm -hmm. and our, our coverage, our, our citizens are covered. And all of a sudden then, you know, we have to bring somebody else in that we don't have coverage for. Um, because of no fault of our own, you know, is that something we can write into a contract that you'll assume that liability of that? They were, they'll, they're never going to pay for anybody else's other than their own. However, so basically what we've covered today is two out of the three that are serving your area are ours. Um, have you brought in helicopters from anywhere else like that? Is there? It, it, it is um, Air, or Medics Air One, Care Flight in our area, Care Flight. Or reach. reach. Okay, so two out of the three of those that are in the rotation, they're covered for anyway. Um, the only one that they're not is Medics One, which at this time currently they don't have a membership program. Um, and I imagine that will eventually happen. Uh, what I tell people, I guess, um, if I'm understanding where you're going with this, is if they travel somewhere like quite a bit where um, they have multiple providers in an area, say Idaho, say they spend a ton of time in Idaho and they were worried that another helicopter was going to come get them, my suggestion to them is always to have more than one membership um, if they were to buy it for themselves because you, it's honestly going to be who is closest to you. In our area, there's not a ton of multiple providers like there is in different areas in the country. So here, it's, it's more of a moot point because two out of the three that serve the area are covered under this membership. The other one doesn't have a membership program. Um, so getting the full MSP would protect them in this area. Uh, I think your question would apply more like if they were traveling areas where they had just a ton of multiple providers. Um, then my suggestion to them would always be find out, you know, get another membership. They're inexpensive. I mean, $65 a year versus those, you know, medical bills. Um, but again, we're only ever going to pay if it's our aircraft. Um, will you guys build car insurance if it's a vehicle accident? Uh, the, yeah, they will. They'll work with them. Uh, if it's, you mean the other vehicle? Yeah, either either one. If it's a vehicle accident I mean is that an option if somebody is medically uninsured to build it yeah they ask them insurance. if there's any third party any other people that have responsibility for that billing you know they'll they'll send them a thing saying hey how are you doing sorry you're an accident mm -hmm. do you have any other people you want us sure. to contact at that time okay. so yes they will. um do they have to call you to get a membership in order for this to be covered or are they automatically covered? Under? They're automatically. Okay. Right, right now, they're all automatically covered if they're a resident of Lander County and they get flown out of Lander. Mm -hmm. they're, they're covered now. If they were to do this, they're covered for the full pr pr footprint and no, they don't have to call. <coughs> um, typically, the only calls I get in areas like this are if they need new decals or they lost their card or they want, you know, something along those lines, need help with paperwork if they did get in an accident. So it's really when there's a full MSP in effect, um, it's more maintenance is my job in those particular areas. Gina, just a clarification on that when you were saying how you prove you're a resident. We have a lot of folks that have homes in Kingston mm -hmm. that also live other places and sometimes out of state. So um, what are you requiring? Are you requiring a driver's license or just the fact that they, they pay electricity and... and they're really pretty lenient on that. So on your partial right now, if they ask for a proof of address for Lander County, it'll be a piece of mail 
a tax return, a school transcript, something showing that they live at that address. Okay, so they could have dual. They could, yes. Residency, and, actually. And, yes, and again, and as long if as they have, have a home full, here, um, that, okay. That's really only matters with the partial right now. But yes, um, for the partial MSP to prove <coughs> a resident of Lander, it's a piece of mail or a school transcript or a tax return or a so, license, whatever they can give us showing the address on there. When we started this, <coughs> it was $1,200 for six months based upon the number of physical properties that were taxed in the county or something, there was some kind of form, formula like that. Um, what formula do you use? Uh, to tell you the truth, when they come, they go through and they look at how many people um, are uh, currently Medicare Medicaid households. They take that out of the equation. When they're pricing this, they have their whole formula. That's why it takes a very long time. That's really above my pay grade. Um, but I'm guessing the one you're talking about was probably not our company. Um, it was Aramedics One, how they figured it out. Was it the same company? Yeah, it, it was your company. They based it on the population within the county when uh, Chris was here. Mm -hmm. That's the way he explained it to They're me. basing it on the population in the county now. And what they do is take out households that are Medicare, Medicaid covered um, right. and go off of that. And then they come up, they look at the number of flights they do out of the area, and then they come up with a number. Okay. Yeah, that's what I remembered, Keith. It was something to do with physical structures. I don't remember the $1,200 for six months. That well, was it, never it, a it contract was, that we did, though. What That's they, what's throwing me off here. What they did was because it was only a partial year, it was prorated. Oh, got it. Okay. So and that's then why. Next, and then the next year it was twice that. It went up to 2400 Correct. And then it's just like everything else going on. Yes. How many aircraft are available to Lander County at any given time? Um, helicopters and so we have a helicopter and a plane in Elko. We have a helicopter and a plane in Ely. We have uh, two helicopters out of Ogden. We have um, Reno. Uh, so we have aircraft there, um, a plane. And I believe they have a helicopter there now, but I'm not 100% on that. So Care Flight is actually plane and helicopter. I believe so. I think they have a helicopter there now. I'm not 100%. Um, but I you said you well, I mean, got Care a helicopter Flight has here helicopters out of um, based at like Gardnerville. Um, Fallon. Yeah, correct. So the Reno base, I'm not sure if they have a chopper, but we have helicopters like with care flight in those, in those places. Um, so those are all places that would be within flight distance that could serve this area. Typically it's been Elko or Ely. Um, sometimes apparently Reno. So all of those helicopters that are care flight are covered under this because not just the Reno based one. No, care flight, care flight is covered under this. Okay. Correct. Yes. So whether they come out of Gardnerville or Fallon or wherever. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I did have one question, uh, Gina. What what is our average number or of transports per year? Helicopter, fixed wing. Um, if, if you have that, I'm, I'm curious. You know, I don't. Uh, let me call Stacy and see if I can get a hold of her. She's the operations manager. Um, that is well, it, it was just a mm -hmm. question. Okay, so you guys want, we'll take a few minutes for a break while you're finding that thank information. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And she actually might be able to answer that for you. Uh, your EMS. A uh, person will probably know about how many flights they request a year out of here. Um, but let me call okay. just my company and figure out. Okay. Getting back to order, please. Okay, um, so uh, 2018 uh, for Battle Mountain requested 43 flights, 2019, 65. Um, they canceled five of those and we declined six out of all those flights. So that'll give you some numbers. Decline if we declined them, it was because we were already on another flight, weather was inclement or whatever. So that's the numbers that were requested and the numbers that we flew for 2018, 2019. So if someone was to be flown out, what is the base rate if they have no coverage at all? There's not a base rate. I mean, it basically depends on where they're taking them, what aircraft they use, what to they Reno, do. Reno, from here to Reno. Uh, yeah, again, it depends on what they're doing. And that there, there's not a base rate. Um, they say the average out of pocket, usually for people, is more than 10000 through any company, not just mine, if you were to Google that. But there's not a base rate of like what a flight would cost. 
I use the $63,000 example just because that's a bill that was current in this particular area, and I believe he got flown to Utah, but I could be wrong. It might have been Renown. Um, but one of the, the closer hospitals, it was either U of U or Renown, and that flight bill was $63,000. Can you tell me again how many flights were refused? Six, I believe. Let me make sure that. Uh, yes, six declines. Five canceled on urine, like they would right. request a helicopter and then decide they were going to take them by ground. Uh, 43 requested in 2018, 65 in 2019. All right. Well, we have a motion. Well, I'll make a motion. <coughs> I make a motion that we upgrade our coverage in Landry County to Air Med Care Network. A total of sixty-six thousand thirty-one and seventy cents, uh, thirty-one dollars and seventy cents. <clears throat> and in my motion, I also would like an update from Keith when he finds out that we've used the service and <clears throat> just report on if they had to pay anything or you know what the, what the deal was just so that we know um, how viable this is for for our for our uh, residents. I'll I'm just going to say one one more thing. <clears throat> there are just some people in this county that we have to take care of because they're ours, and that's how I see this. So. Right, second? I second. All, right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion <coughs> carries. Thank you, young lady. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, just a clarification on that. Is that effective this state today? I believe so. For the, the, yes, we can make it effective today if that's what you like. Because you, you're going to follow up the contract. Right? I will, yes. Uh, this actually, is just a proposal. Contract over. Um, I'll just have to have an update for the until today. Okay. So the contract's now. Very good. So effective today. All right. So for possible action to approve, disapprove contract submitted by Stanley Security for the installation of a ca uh, camera and security system. Yeah. Anna Panola with the building department. I'm Don Tennyson with Stanley S Conversion Security Solutions. And hello again. Hello. Hi. So um, we, you guys approved the proposal. This is the contract. Okay. We're not. We're going one year without the service fees because it's manufactured um, warranty. Before the second year starts, we'll negotiate the service fees for the year two through five, oh, four. It's two five. So did we have the um, <laughs> breakdowns of what the monthly service fee was going to be in the last? We've, we've been negotiating, and this first year is going to give us the time to see what our service calls are, how we're running, what's going to run, give us a feel to negotiate. Okay. So we were negotiating, but we decided to take the first year free. Well, that's covered anyway, so then, then we'll discuss it before the second year. Okay. And bring it before you guys. All right. Any yeah, yeah, just a clarification. Um, how long are we looking at to have us up all installed and running and back on track? If you don't mind me answering that, you we come we're going to do it in stages. You come up here, I'm please. Sorry. Uh, I'm Scott Kabowski with Stanley Security as well, regional manager. Um, because of the county's needs and make sure we do it correctly, we do it in phases. So we actually do the first part of the kickoff, make sure we have the stages where we are. And we want to do it in the first part that's not as necessary and requirement that if, if an event happens, where, where the system's down. So it actually will take place in three months. That way we have you secured at all times. And as we're doing this, um, for example, I used an example earlier, um, the county prison, something takes place and you have a walk, you want to make sure that's working. You don't want that in the beginning, you want that in the middle because we have everything in the software, the programming, all the systems already up there and operating correctly. Um, that also takes care of time that we have the kickoffs, we have the reviews, and the training's done before we do any very serious items. Okay? So, uh, Anna, yes. I do have some questions. Um, 
the agenda item itself does not state an amount. And there's a couple different amounts in the um, backup. So what are we for the... For the key card, the access is 1,995 dollars and forty-five cents. Okay, and then the other one is one hundred and forty-three thousand. Yes. Okay. So, um, like I said, I would like to have those written in the uh, well, the agenda. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> the housing, the agenda request form, an amount of three hundred thirty-eight one eighty-four for equipment, then one hundred forty-four. On uh, fourteen thousand four hundred for a monthly service fee. That's what's in the request form. We, I widened that out because we weren't going to do that. So you, you didn't get the widened version. Okay. Sorry. So the two amounts that Judy spoke of that totals that three hundred thirty-eight thousand. I believe so. Yeah. <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve. Three hundred thirty-eight thousand one hundred eighty-four dollars and seven cents for the Stanley security system for installation. All right, do a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, I'm sorry. And, and cameras. One question: We talked about interfacing cameras with dispatch. That's still on the okay. table. That's still a yes okay. sir. That did not go away. Okay. Right. I, would, let me, I was concerned about interfacing the cameras with uh, dispatch at the SO. That was my concern. Correct. Thank you. And, and I'd we're like pro we're providing a, uh, a workstation. Authorize Aye. the chair Aye. to sign. Thank you. Who, would, who said I think it needs to be on record because okay. nobody's saying where the money comes from. Okay. So, okay, um, okay. Laura, can you? I'll, I'll change the motion. I'll amend my motion, but um, can you repeat what you said, please? Can you move forward? Come up here so we can get it out please. Excuse so me. So we can get it Madam Chair. Laura Duvall, Assessor. Um, the funds to cover this cost will come from the Assessor Technology Fund as a grant to the county computer line to cover the cost. Thank you. So we don't need we don't need to change anything. I, 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 I mean, we, we just authorized the amount. We didn't say where no. it was coming from. Right, but I, I believe that it was seconded before before Judy added in the uh, the second part of it, which was the camera. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'll just so start all over. She okay. Her motion okay. So she can make it again. So we have to withdraw the second too. Okay. Okay. No, but we've already voted, so we can't amend it. I don't believe we No, we have to start over with a new motion. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I will make a motion that we approve the contract to Stanley Security for the installation of the camera and security system in the amount not to exceed $338,184.07 to be taken out of the Assessor Tech Fund and authorize the chair to sign. And I will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very Thank you. much. Aye. Thank you very much. Okay. So for public works, for, po for possible action to accept one of the following bids for the Lather County Airport Transmission Main Line Project, PWP-LA-2018-195. Uh, number one, Honeywell Construction, $4,845,450. And 48 cents. Canyon Construction, seven million two hundred twenty-one thousand three hundred forty-three dollars and thirty-four cents. Q and D Construction, five million nine hundred eighty-nine thousand nine hundred one dollars and fifty-two cents. Granite Construction, eight million one hundred sixty-five thousand hundred sixty-five dollars. Thank you. Yep. 
Hello, Commissioners. Aaron Martinez with AM Engineering for the record. And uh, the item in front of you today is the uh, bids that we had received for the airport waterline project. And we have provided Lander County a recommendation for award uh, to award Honeywell Construction as the low bidder. As part of that process, we did a bid evaluation with the county clerk's office. And the bids, uh, the bid that was accepted, all bids that were accepted were deemed appropriate. They had all the uh, proper documentation, bonding, and all of those aspects. Um, so after that, the recommendation for award analysis uh, looked at items such as price loading, uh, certain aspects uh, within the bid for any irregularities that could uh, outline any anomalies uh, later. Uh, we didn't see any of those irregularities, and so we uh, issued that recommendation for award to Lander County. And um, just a little bit more, I have some information for you if I could hand this to you folks. As part of addendum number five for this project, um, we issued some critical information to the contractors before they actually placed their bid. So all this information was available to them prior to placing of that bid. The critical information in there, you can find it under um, item 10. So. This project in particular is kind of going an abnormal route due to a development agreement that you folks have already considered and approved. That development agreement has some time frames in there that are sh were contingent on the agreement being approved. Those time frames were essentially outlined by other parties, not myself. So the project has been trying to conform to those uh, target dates to, in order to achieve that development agreement requirements. That development agreement, essentially the last requirement that's hanging out there, and, and council can uh, discuss this further, is essentially towards the end of this month, Lander County has to enter into a construction agreement in order to fully solidify that agreement that you folks approved last meeting. And so that's what this item is in front of you today, is to approve that construction contract. One of the caveats to that that's in the addendum for the contract as well as in the contract for the development agreement has some contingency items in there discussing approval from NDEP. Right now we are at the tail end of that approval from NDEP. Uh, we've had some pretty at length discussions and comments and revisions from them and it, everything is looking very positive to receive that approval from them. We have not heard from them as of late uh, but we're hoping to receive uh, an approval or a notice uh, very soon. Some of those uh, target dates I have identified in this addendum. So we are asking to approve this construction contract contingent on the items that I've identified here, which is essentially this contract can't go forward without NDP approval, essentially. So was this these documents sent to Austin? I didn't know they were going to be presented. Okay. I had no yeah. idea. So I have Okay, please. Sorry about that. So I have a couple questions. Good morning, Aaron. Um, Good morning. Just one thing I want to also comment on the um, agenda itself is I actually would have liked to, for the backup documentation, to see the actual um, bid numbers, I mean the breakout from the different contractors. So all that information is available at your clerk's office, and so the commission, of course, has due access to that at any time. Uh, they've made full copies of all the bids, including the actual documentation, so feel free to go through that. Well, I'm just saying that I think that it, it would have been nice to be, you know, in the backup. But So a couple other questions. Um, do we have a time on this? Uh, do we have a, a number of days for this contract? Yes. Also, it should have been provided in your packet. Uh, the, we've prepared for Lander County, as typical, uh, the notice of award and notice to proceed documentation. In that documentation, you'll see a 180-day construction contract period, uh, but we anticipate that construction time frame to be reduced. Uh, essentially, there's some added time frames in there due to the length of the project. We're staring at about 53,000 linear feet of pipe. Uh, and, and so uh, we wanted to make sure and give that contract an adequate amount of time to uh, be able to successfully be completed. All right, so there's 
Unless I'm missing something, it does not say in our backup. Um, and that's not something I prepare. No, I understand yeah. that. I'm not. Okay. I'm just. Gotcha. Um, I, you know, just asking these questions. And um, the other thing is, is are there liquid liquidated liquidated damages on this project? Um, I'll have to confirm that with you. I'll have to double check. In my brain, I see this thousand dollar liquidated damage. Uh, text floating around in my head, but it, there may not be. I will have to get back to you on that one. Typically on a project of this nature, the liquidated damages are limited, uh, more of like a B2 construction. You start to look at those uh, liquidated damages for typical time frame constraints, but uh, I'll have to get back to you on that particular one. Well, because I also know that, um, you know, uh, Battle Mountain Land Company is kind of, they want this thing done too. I mean, we all want it done, but... Mm -hmm. You know, they've sort of put us on a, a time notice. Um, I guess the other question I have for Keith then is I did not go back and check the budget. For some reason, I I don't believe we have that in the budget for last. For some reason, I'm thinking we only had two and a half million budgeted for this project. I've discussed this with uh, the public works director and, and the money is there. I'll let... Uh, Bert, get into that. We're going to ask for record. So we do. We have two. I believe. Don't quote me exact numbers. I can go pull them if you'd like. But we have two point five million for the for the water line and an additional, um, like two point four or something that is for the spur line. So with which this includes as well. This project actually includes even more than that because it includes hooking up to the racetrack and the airport. Um, so we do have the combined budget. We do have the budget for this project. Yes. Okay, I wasn't aware that we had a separate budget for the spur line. I just remember 2.5 million for for the water line, and I think also like a million discussed for the road. Correct. Um, I don't recall, um, and I'm not saying that. You know, I'm just saying I don't remember specifically, but I don't remember, you know, additional funding for the spur line. So, I was just curious if we had the funding now, or if this was going to be split between two fiscal periods. And it, and it probably will end up rolling between two physical periods. There are uh, there are some new legislation that's just been passed. This SB 206, I believe it is, for it, that myself and the contractor have to get more familiar with. But is what it is now is the so we might be back before this board later when when to ask for an extension of time on this project because the unions are coming forward and they want for every three operators in one class to add a apprentice an apprentice and the issue with that is is not every contractor is union and then getting a union hall and getting somebody out here and, and all the the things that come with it so before I speak too much on it and, and put my foot in my mouth there's there's a lot to this that that may extend this where we may not be able to get as many employees on this job as as we would like until we have a full understanding of what is required by the state for that and I'm not going to you know swear to this either but i do believe that you can get a waiver no, for that. yes well you you can you so you we did meet with the with the uh labor board labor commission yeah and they uh you can get a waiver however there's some caveats you have to apply first they have to have nobody available in their union hall to send you you have to prove all of that and then and then you send in for your waiver now if you do get the waiver um then you can throw as many people as you'd like at it. If you don't get that waiver, then the county is the one that's who's responsible for a five, $5,000 fee for every infraction, um, not, the, not the contractor. So, and that falls back on, on myself, who, whoever signs certified payroll for the contractor on the job, whatever municipality that is. So like I say, there's just, there's a lot more to this bill than, than I understand right now. And we're trying to get our heads wrapped around it so we can move forward in the best way possible. So there's some things that are out of your control as usual. Yeah, yeah. This is, I mean, and and this is brand new to me. Another question that that I have to get clarification from the is if they're working off of a public works number because if that's the case, then this, the public works number that was issued to this job was issued prior to this bill. So then it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't affect us. Um, okay. But if they're working off of when we award this contract, which would be today, then it would affect us. So there's some. There's some things that we got to get clarification on. I'm waiting for answers. And I have a question going back to something that she said because I don't understand all of everything that you 
guys are talking about. So what is the liquid, liquidated damages? What does that even mean? So in a lot of jobs, the liquidated damages, we can't really go back and, and make effect because you have to show where the damages come from. And so, for example, if we were to go across the street down here and our, we gave our contractor two weeks to get across that street and they're three weeks in so a business can't be accessed, then we could apply some liquidated damages, say, hey, you guys are costing this oh, okay. much, so, we're, okay. so we have some damages. But, okay. for example, being out here in the desert, there's not a lot of, of area where we can say this is really costing us money unless somebody like Nevada Land said, hey, we have a business that's going in. You guys haven't got your water line to it in time, Okay. if that makes sense. Go ahead. All right, so my understanding, and in, in the years that I have worked construction, which – has been in other states, various service states. I work for federal highways in uh, national parks. Liquidated damages in those contracts were you had so many number of days to do the, complete the job. In this case, it's 180 days. And if the job was not completed by that time, you were assessed liquidated damages at, at the rate per day until that job is completed. You were allowed some days for, for weather and whatnot, but that's Basically, what it's doing also is it's forcing the contractor to get the job done. Okay. And so that's where I'm looking at and questioning the liquidated damages. It's not an impact on um, the businesses and whatnot. It's making sure that the contract is completed in a timely manner. I'm ready to make a motion. All right. So, I'm ready so to make a motion. Both sides make a motion? Yeah, I make a motion <clears throat> that we approve the... PWP-LA-2018-195 project, <clears throat> give it to Honeywell for $4,845,000. Oh, give it to Honeywell not to exceed $4,854,450.48. That's not the correct amount. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and you read it back. Read figure again. Oh, your numbers oh, $4,845,450.48 um, to be signed by the chair. All second the motion. All, right. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Aye. And I'd like to just point out one more thing. I know Lauren is in the room. He still is. Um, he doesn't get very many pats on the back, but to come in over a million dollars under the closest bidder. And he continuously does this for the citizens of Lander County. And these, these, these are dollars we can put other places. It's, I want Lauren to know we sure appreciate it. And he, typically in all these jobs, we've had very few change orders from Honeywell that haven't been to the credit of Lander County. And, you so. know, I brought that concern to you about the number, and you assured me that it's top quality work. That's all I've been concerned about. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a great rate, and I understand Honeywell's here. Their plant's here. And that gives them a big advantage. And thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yes, can we take a break for a few minutes? <coughs> action to approve submitting comments on the proposed revisions by the BLM, uh, Bureau of Land Management who have recently been tasked with updating its regulations for grazing 43 CFR part 4100 grazing administration executive executive for Alaska with <coughs> comments accepted online through March 6 2020 so this is a, a pretty hot topic right now the, the grazing um, I wanted to get some feedback from the commission. There is a meeting coming up in uh, Elko on the 18th of uh, February that may shed some new light on some of this stuff. So uh, I wanted to make you aware of this, and um, I'll uh, attend the meeting, and I believe Commissioner Clark is talking about attending it as well. Anybody else who wants to attend, that would be great. When is the meeting? February 18th. One in, in Elko at the convention center there. I'll be there. So 1.30 or 4.30? Uh, 
Oh, I'm. It is four thirty. You're is right. Four thirty. Yeah, it is four thirty. I. It. It should be in your backup. The email. Because I got information that it was one thirty, by one of the. One of the local ranchers told me it was one thirty. I'll have to let them know. I, you know, I will double check and see. Okay. But let me see. Elko is it just says at the convention center. Um, those meetings. February eighteenth. Oh, meetings are held from 4.30 to 7.30 p.m. It's the uh, oh, second okay. page of your, of your uh, so backup there. And they'll get into some, some detail. This is up by the, at the college, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's the one, the new one that they built behind the, uh, the city offices there. Okay. By, by the swimming pool. You're going. I'll find you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. And, and then we can come back and, and if... Uh, if the commission wants to uh, write a letter, then we can certainly, you can instruct me to do that. I do have just a couple comments on it because our ranchers have been working under this rangeland, rangeland reform from the 90s, and we all know what's been happening in the last number of years. Um, there's been some of our really top people, um, like J.J. Goachia, this is on so many of our our different uh, state association meetings and committees. And he said he really has encouraged everyone to get their comments in. This is the one time that we have an opportunity to do so. So what I asked for was to have this on the agenda so that we could ask for the comment letters to be written and then have it before us for the next agenda. Because if we don't approve it today, there's no way we're going to be able to get it approved on the next one and then write our letter because it's due March 6th. So um, I'll make a motion that uh, the commissioners do write a letter um, regarding the proposed revisions by the Bureau of Land Management and that they have that letter before us for our next commission. I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Number seven, for possible action to adopt the current rate fees for Battle Mountain Water and Sewer or set new water and sewer rates for the Water and Sewer District number two and to set a date when Lander County will assume the responsibilities of the Water and Sewer um, um, District number two. Thank you. Um, I have a couple comments on this. <clears throat> One is when we decided we were going to, to look at the taking over the GID uh, from Austin. Um, one of our big reasons, well there were several reasons, but one of our very important reason was the rates and they would have to borrow more money to finish some of their construction and that we didn't want the rates to go up. I've taken a look at the different rates and this would be a real special hardship on the businesses, um, which would raise the rates considerably because they're uh, actually attributed to different, um, different amounts of RV sites, different amounts of hotel rooms and such. And I'm going, I don't think what's good for Battle Mountain is good for Austin because we're talking two entirely different types of of the businesses and and how much business they do in Austin and how much business they do in Battle Mountain. So m my recommendation would be just to stay with the rates that they have now and we'll work with that to see how, the, how that all comes out. Because one of the things we promised in the committee meetings was that we were not going to raise their rates. Do we have a copy of the rates? We don't have a copy of their rates, right. but I didn't know this was on the agenda and we were going to look at their rates. So um, if we can just say we'll just keep the current rates. In fact, I'll make a motion that we keep the current rates that Austin has now for the Water and Sewer District for number two. I'll second that. How's that sound, Bert? I'm not. I'm not familiar with Austin's rates. I guess if they are, uh, if they're a lower rate, I'm. I'm all for that. I think that's probably what our word was when we started this thing. Is that we were, like Patsy said, you know, or Commissioner Wade said that we were 
trying to uphold our word. Yeah. Um, why, why would you need at a business like the International in Austin? What would their connection be? Three quarters or six inches? <laughs> Oh, oh, no, that's just so, I believe that the, the paper you're looking at, that a six inch is, is a water meter that maybe go in for a park or something like that. Most of our parks here only have a four inch. Um, so that, them are different fee schedules for different size meters. The, they probably have a three quarter inch to a one inch meter in, you know, for most of the places all throughout Austin. I don't believe there's anything down there that has a six inch or even four inch for that matter. So you have no opposition to No, the, the only thing that I think that maybe needs to be addressed is the system obligation fees that are currently being charged down there in Austin. Um, I think that is one of the concerns that I heard from some of the members of the community down there is that... Is they, that where you have the they, water line in front of your property and you pay even if you're not hooked up? Because that's the thing well, I if you, if, say if you Well, say if you vacate your property and, and you're not there, but you have a, a, a meter pit on site, you pay a system obligation fee... So every month you pay for having that meter pit, even though you aren't using any water or anything's being We do that here? Used. No. Okay. Um, that's what so I that, that might be something that you guys might want to address in this. I'm not, because that's the only concern that I've heard. That's a concern. You know what? I would say let's put that on as a separate agenda item. Okay. And I'd be happy to do that, and we'll get the inf more information and more input on it. Because I know they do that in Kingston, um, and we do it in Gilman. I mean, it's just part of... Uh, and, and, and of course the big cities do, it's an obligation fee because you have the right to have your water. So if people are there during the summertime, they pay. In the winter, they still pay. And that's the key because you're still running the whole system. So I think we need to take a look at that separately if we could use that as a separate. But for the rates right now, will they be everything the same? So we're voting on rates so that we don't know motion. what they are. I mean, yeah, I, should we bring I'm this back with, uh, can we bring this whole item back and, and then with the system obligation fee as well? Because I know like here in Battle Mountain, instead of an obligation fee, is what we do is we charge for a turn on, we charge for a turn off. Um, as opposed to charging everybody monthly, right? So that makes, kind of, that's more or less obligation. And some of the bigger cities do that. Most of GIDs have an obligation because they're so small they can't keep up with the infrastructure. You know, um, but I think that it might be better if we brought all the rates back up, Austin's, and so for everybody to see, because yeah. I'm slightly confused by this one as well. I agree. I, I agree, agree with that, too. Yeah. Right. Okay, we still, we still have a motion on the floor, and I'm okay to keep the rates, but to take the obligation fee and bring that in separately. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah however you guys would like to So, yeah, we have a first and a second. We're, yeah, we're you had a first. I mean, it was the first. We're approving right. rates that I haven't seen, so I mean, if we're going to put it through, I'm going to vote nay on it. But. Okay, but the whole idea was, does it make a difference? Since it does that's make what a they're difference. running, I want to see what, the, what I'm, what and I'm we approving, promise what to I'm keep voting them the same. So I want to see the rates. So yeah. So okay. Well, I did second Patsy's motion. So, so. my my biggest concern, since I've been a commissioner, is the way I understood it. I buy property down in Austin. And I don't have a meter or anything, but there's water that goes in front of the lot. You have to pay. And they may have it set up that way. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not familiar with how they have so, that. So, yeah, I, I mean, I'm willing to pass this if you're going to bring it back, and then we'll mm -hmm. do that one item. I mean, <clears throat> and we can always rectify it at that point if there's an issue. But if you need to get going on this... No, no, I, it, we have a lot to budget for on this, a lot of stuff that I'm really unfamiliar with. Okay. It's going it's well, to be a crapshoot this, this first year. Perhaps it would be better to, if we did bring it back and waited. So then we will, since we have a first and a second, we'll go all in favor. Aye. Opposed? Aye. I vote nay. For the simple fact, nay. I don't know what the rates are. Nay, just wait for it to come back with the, all the information. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so I do have one more question, just so I don't forget. What is the, the shut off and sh you know shut off shut on feet here in Battle Mountain? That I'm not familiar with. I'll have to go grab the paper. Oh, okay. So they, they call the office of secretaries, call us out, and then they do it in their books. Yeah, no, I was just curious. So. Okay. No, it, it failed. Three. Did, did you, Commissioner, did you want to set a date or? To take over? Yes. 
put it on the next meeting? On the next meeting. Well, it says it because there are two different parts to this. There's the fees and then set a date to take it over. Right. Well, we can have two different. Oh. We okay. can have two different. No, I understand, but I don't believe you. You even oh, discussed. Oh, address. address the. the oh, date. taking and it over. Keith has some information from the, on the tax authorities part. that I would like at least you to. To, whether you make a motion or not, okay. I'd like you to hear his information. Okay, so yeah, we need to address the second part of it as far as the taking over of the district. Okay, so um, the tax uh, Department of Taxation recommends that we take this over of the first of the fiscal year. It makes it easier, it's, it's more convenient, it's cleaner to take it over July 1st than to try to take it over April or May or or something like that. So that that's their recommendation, and that would have been my recommendation once we got to the takeover date would be first of the fiscal year. So the question on that then is, since we have to um, we have to commit the funds for NDOT, because they're going to be starting in April or May. Yes. So are they running it, or are we going to be running it? And we've got an awful lot of stuff that needs to be coordinated through those months before we ever get to the fiscal year. We will be working with DOT and Water and Sewer 2 in the onset of the project. And then after July 1st, we'll, we'll be working solely or with uh, DOT. Water and Sewer District 2 has now done a resolution saying they will cooperate with Lander County. Which is good because at first they said they wouldn't. So the reason I'd like some idea is when to do the final resolution, finalizing resolution. The protests are due February 26, I believe, uh, and we have a meeting the day after that. But just a general sense because I need to put whether there are protest letters or not protest letters into the finalized resolution. I can't do it up until I have what we're going to charge and the date we're going to take over. So that's what I'm waiting for. And it doesn't matter when that happens, but I just need some type of... I can't submit the final resolution until I have that information. So if that makes any sense. Judy. All right, so we can set the rates at any time. It yeah, doesn't I'd like matter. To put it in the resolution. Okay, but that. okay, so right. Yeah, but You'd yes. like to put it in the resolution, uh, and um, so we can do that any time. But officially, we wouldn't take over until the first of July. If you so decide. Okay. If you, that's, it would help me on on doing the. Uh, the finalizing ordinance, uh, because then, like, if you if you decide to take it over at the beginning of the fiscal year, that gives us all more time to address how much the the, the rates and the charges. Well, basically, you know, um, other than getting your resolution and, and whatnot, we're not really under the gun time wise. No. Okay. We could be if you decide to take it over a month from now. So, but since the tax authority is recommending the fiscal year, that gives us some time. And we wanted you to discuss that or think about it or make a motion that that would be a good time. It, it's up to you. But now, I if we change the rates, though, when we haven't officially taken it over, can we actually do that? Well, it, they wouldn't apply until we take it over, but okay, it would okay. be in the ordinance. I could put okay. it in the ordinance, and then when I give notice to everybody, all the property owners, they'd know what their rates were going to be for that both water sense. and sewer. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So I have a quick question. So within the, the way this is written, so today are they making a motion to uh, go into effect in July, or does it have to come back written differently? No, if, if you make a motion that you'll take it over at the beginning of the fiscal year or at the end of this fiscal year, that will give okay. us all okay. an understanding of, of uh, when we have to. Well, 
I'll make a motion that we follow the uh, tax commission's recommendation and <clears throat> we uh, take over water and sewer district two at the end of this fiscal year, which would be July 30th. By finalizing ordinance. And July finalize 1st. and finalize the ordinance. July first. July first. July first. Oh, it's not the very last day. No, okay. Okay. okay, we'll take it over July first. Okay. The beginning of the fiscal year. Uh, I'll second that. Of what year? Of tw of twenty twenty. So, uh, second. And give the chair to sign. If you need to sign. Well, there's nothing to sign. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Aye. Thank you. All right. So for possible action to approve, disapprove the credit card agreement with Warner County um, credit card use. This is the uh, agreement we discussed at their last meeting, and we made the appropriate changes, which are outlined eight and nine. And um, so you're, you're uh, the board would accept these. I'll make a motion. We approve the. Uh, Credit card agreement for Lander County credit card use that is in our book. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Have we had a problem, Kate? <coughs> Opposed? Nay. We we've had some some minor problems, but we we take care of them okay. regularly. This will alleviate that. Go ahead. Well, I I just. I'm opposed to this, just my personal feelings that if we had problems, you know, I understand that, you know, occasionally you don't always get your receipt, but, um, you know, last meeting you did state that you've only had a couple little issues with it, so I didn't understand why we were changing a policy on something that we didn't have a whole lot of issue with, and then now you're saying that we've had some issues and we're dealing with it. so. My idea of dealing with it would be whoever is creating these issues be held accountable, not changing the rules. That's all I have to say. My I just comment wasn't it, this was something that was kind of it was our with our audit, right? We had to wasn't didn't this change come about partly because there, of that? Was, you know, a weakness there. There was discussion within our audit, yes, uh. related to our the credit card. And isn't this what, because I remember them speaking and saying the fuel cards were the ones, or the, when we received fuel, that mm -hmm. it wasn't such a dire necessity because it was reading when we got, when they got fuel and that it was for fuel. But, yes, Correct. that's, that, that was the reason is credit card state, or uh, receipts sometimes aren't available at, at the serve yourself pumps and people were not, be, not getting the receipt. Either the, the, the paper was out or the, the office was closed, it was early in the morning or late at night, so they wouldn't be able to get a receipt for fuel. This, it's the fuel is just, or the exception is with fuel receipts only. Another comment too, and wouldn't you, I mean if you're going to address a person who's uh, um, not following the procedure, you'd want policy for that. In, to order, be able to, in order to suspend yeah, the card, exa that yeah, is exactly. correct. So, yes. Okay, just want to make sure. Possible action to set policy on who uh, on who sits on the board of equalization pursuant to NRS three six one three four zero. Currently, there are three voting members, two appointed members from the public, and one county commissioner appointed by the board of land county commissioners. The board needs to determine if they want the three voting members <coughs> to all be from the public, or two uh, from the public and one from the um, board of land county commissioners. As this is um, a present situation, further the board needs to decide if they wish to appoint an alternative, or an alternate, excuse me, from the public pursuant to NRS 361.340. So basically, <clears throat> we have a three member board I set on it as a commissioner. The only weakness I see in it is if one of us couldn't attend, what do you do? 
Right. Because you only have a two-member board. And that's what, that's what happened in the past, is there was only two members. So, because in, in the past, the commissioner was a non-voting member. But it was, it was determined that the commissioner needed to be a voting member because we couldn't get three nice. on, on the board. So that way, that gave us the, the three. And if I'm, if I'm clear, I think we have a, a member of the public that's interested in sitting on that board currently, correct? Yes. Okay, Commissioner, if I may. Um, the county, Lando County Assessor, Laura Duval, uh, asked me to, to state for the record, and this is not my opinion, this is from her, since she couldn't attend this particular uh, session, that she believes that we should have three voting members from the public because there may be situations that arise and Sadie Sullivan has, has mentioned these same things to me, that they would both prefer three voting members for the public because if, a mem if someone from the public contests the amount of money or the amount uh, that their land is worth, let's say, that may put a county commissioner in a conflict of interest. It may. Uh, but, but because that, they will want to vote for, for the county, <clears throat> and they they may not be able to be objective. Oh. So, I'm just stating what what they both told me. Uh, the reason we have two members from the public and one county commissioner is because we used to have two from the north, one from the south, and we lost the south, and no one was interested from the south. So that's why we have, so we have two choices there. You can, you can say we want three voting members from the public and or plus an alternate because we don't have an alternate now and the statute allows, and, and I believe that the statute, I asked him to attach the statute as, as background statute says. And are you saying that alternate would be another public member or, or one of the commission? Another public member. Okay, just to avoid the conflict. Yeah, but since we don't, we put that on the agenda because you've never decided to have an alternate and the statute requires right. that you can do it, but we have to ask permission if you want to proceed. So they're two separate things. First, do you want three voting members from the public, if possible? And if not possible, then obviously the county commissioner could vote, unless we have an alternate, then the alternate would take over. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it depends if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. I'm fine with the three from the public, if that's how it was done. And we well, did. if that's what is recommended by two of our elected officials. And I'm not trying to put words in Sadie's mouth, but that's what she advised me. And Laura advised me that this morning. Go ahead. Thank you. I, I like the idea of three from the public and, and removing because it can be a conflict of interest when you're, you're here trying to work for the county and for all of your right. citizens. Um, but I'm wondering, can we designate two from the south or two from the north and one from the south? You can, but I would suggest if we can't get one from the south that you also allow us to ask for an alternate so the alternate can be from at anywhere. Large. In, in, in case no one steps up from the south, yes. we would have three, but that would be... So if you go to okay. one from the south, I would I would suggest we also go with an alternate. Got it. Thank you. Um, I guess I was just going to make a motion, and in light of what um, Councillor said, I'll make a motion that we go with three voting members from the public, um, two from the north, one from, from the south, that we also add an alternate that can be at large. I'll second that motion. All right. We're elected. Oh, Sadie. And the statute does allow, if there's only two there, they, even with an alternate, for the county commissioner to be a voting member. Well, if we have three members from the public now, it's a three-member board. We don't have a commissioner sitting on the board. Well, you have one appointed to it, and we do every year. So if they don't show up for that particular meeting, okay. is all I'm saying, Commissioner, that the county commissioner could vote at that meeting. Is that how it was done in the past, Ted? Was it three members and then a commissioner to sat as well? 
Yeah, but the commissioner never voted because the three members oh, would show sure. up. Yeah. But then when we lost by attrition, the member from the South, that's when you stood up and, and started voting. Would you like me to amend my motion to state that fact? It would be clearer. Okay. So I will amend the motion to also include a, an appointed commissioner who will serve as a voting member only in the case of a tie, if there's not enough members to create the quorum. Right. I'll second. And I'll amend my second to go oh. with that. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Against? <laughs> so, question Ted, when I'm reading on uh, number 11, and I'm going, am I going through and reading the whole thing, or am I waiting for the motion? You mean 10? Uh, 10. Um, am I waiting for the, that just to be read into motion? It depends on how you want to do it, but you have to read the whole thing. Well, I know. It has to be read into motion for sure, but I didn't know if I had to do it, and then it was, again, read, read It in. would be a lot easier if you read the whole thing and ask for one motion to cover everything, okay. unless you want to pull oh, yeah, no. one out. No. But otherwise, you'd be making a motion on each one of them. So oh, I, I would, see. I see. Wait I would minute. suggest okay, you... Okay, yeah, no. All right, okay. I get it. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so for possible action regarding the Nevada Division of Water Resources FY 2020 2021 through 2021 groundwater basin budgets and adjustments for the following basins. You want me to go ahead and read it or you want me to? No, yeah, if you want to make it a motion. Okay. Go ahead. So I'll make a motion that we approve. I got to start all over. Sorry. I'll make the motion to approve the Nevada Division of Water Resources fiscal year 2020 21 uh, groundwater basin budgets and adjustments for the following basins Antelope Valley Groundwater Basin in the amount of $20,106.34, Big Smoky Valley Northern Park Groundwater Basin in the amount of $513.28, Boulder Flat Groundwater Basin in the amount of $1,287. Buffalo Valley Groundwater Basin in the amount of $2,623.28. Caracal Lake Valley Green Groundwater Basin in the amount of $2,593.42. Clovers Area Groundwater Basin in the amount of $20,796.42. Crescent Valley Groundwater Basin in the amount of $48,762.02. Kobe Valley Groundwater Basin in the amount of $182.97. Lower Reese River Groundwater Basin in the amount of $14,399.60. Middle Reese River Groundwater Basin in the amount of $26,104.87. Upper Reese River Groundwater Basin in the amount of $7,866.53. Worldwind Valley Groundwater Basin in the amount of $26,928.49. Kingston Creek, Big Smoky Creek in the amount of $3,144.54 and the Humboldt River in the amount of $25,149.61. So question, have those, have those fees increased? Or they, have they stayed the same from year to year? They fluctuate. They fluctuate, they, they fluctuate a little yeah. bit, but they're all pretty close. There's nothing huge. You second? I did second that. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 We got that uh, letter from Nevada Lands Council, which uh, I think we should write a letter from this commission in support of. Um, yeah, that's what I think. I have something for the next meeting. Uh, commissioner, if you're talking about the lawsuit? No. Oh, okay. No, 
this is something different. I talked to Keith about it. I'd like to look into making Rush Limbaugh an honorary commissioner in Lander County and send him a plaque, a letter, whatever. I mean, just a great guy, and he's facing a hard road. <clears throat> I'd like to look into that. Send him a gavel or something and, and a plaque and say, hey, we appreciate everything that you've done. So would you make him an honorary commissioner, or are we just honoring him as a... Well, I'd like to make him an honorary commissioner. How would commission. we go about doing something like that? I don't know. That's why I'm throwing it out. <laughs> I have no idea. I, th I think we have time, but just a thought that I've had. I, th I think we can honor him. Off the top of my head, we can certainly honor him, but I've, I've never heard of an honorary okay. commissioner. <laughs> well, would you, would you do it in form of like a resolution, or...? Declare National Rush Limbaugh Day. I'm <laughs> Something. I just get the ball rolling and see where we wind up. All right. So, any other upcoming agenda items? Did the commission ever decide, or did we either agendize this for a time on the budget workshop? Normal. Oh, I thought we were doing it nine to five. But that's what I'm asking. Oh, yeah. It was kind of presented as a question from Commissioner Waite, so I just want to be sure that's what we're going to do. Tell them about money. <laughs> Thanks, Art. <laughs> Mine's for public comment when you get to it. I'm sorry. When, I, when you get to public comment. Okay. So, all right. Are we good for agenda items? All right. So, under public comment for non agendized items only, persons are invited to submit comments in writing and or attend and make comments on any non-agendized items of the board meeting, if any. Uh, the discussion of the comments is at the discretion of the board. All public comment may be limited to three minutes per person, again, at the discretion of the board. Reasonable restrictions may be placed on the public comment based upon time, place, and manner, but no uh, public comment based on a viewpoint may be restricted. So public comment, please. Okay, I'm just going to give you an update. Um, Sadie Sullivan, Lander County Clerk, for the record. Um, Tyler has taken over the portion of my office of the fictitious firm names, notary, and um, marriage license. And so that's been quite interesting. Um, they were able to push us through quite quickly. DevNet was going to be the company uh, to do that portion of it. Um, and I lucked out in a roundabout way that I didn't have to deal with the DevNet. So Tyler um, has been the company that we've gone with in that area. Um, we've gone live. Um, so that's been interesting. And at the same time, we had where the DMV is linked to the um, election. So they, anytime a person goes into the DMV, like I've mentioned to you guys, there's two forms that they have to fill out. And um, it's pertaining to their voter registration. So at the beginning of the week, I believe it, the count was 53,000 that has gone through the state of Nevada. So anytime you go into DMV, those are forms that have to be submitted to them. And um, it's affected all the counties. We've gotten some that's came into our county that are not our county, even though the zip code was correct, but the town was left blank. So it's created additional work. Um, basically, our whole morning has been taken up uh, one staff member just because DMV has came on and that's what the legislature passed. So hopefully next legislature they will take it away and then we can have all controls again. So it's been a struggle. Just as long as we don't have any dimples or hanging chads. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, I agree a thousand percent. Um, on the archive uh, portion we have on base uh, that we have it was through High Desert Microimaging, and now it's PDI. And what we've done is we've scanned all the documents into the system. I have not um, had the monies to put to a CD or the microfilm since I've been in office. So I have uh, a lot hanging out there for any and all archives for the scanning. So we have it. It's in the system, but has not been submitted and put over. And I have a quote coming in for that. Um, and then also some I touch base with Art and I think possibly Kathy. I may be wrong on that one. Um, all the old books that we have, um, 
some are in okay shape, some you open and they're falling apart. So I had a gentleman that flew in in 2017 um, to give us a quote to have our books uh, restored. Uh, in the recorder's office, what they've done is they would ship out a couple books at a time, pay for that shipping. They're the old big heavy ones. Um, pay for the shipping back and then they're preserved. This company actually comes here, has a trailer, sets it up, um, and they take oh, the book apart, they preserve, put a spray over the pages front and back, put them in a slip thing, and they put a new book. Um, at that time, the books were between, if you had 100 or 1 to 50, it was 14, 1500 no, 17, about 1700 I believe. If you had over 50 to 200 it dropped to the 1495 So you saved about a couple hundred dollars per books. Um, something I had got with, with Commissioner Clark was, um, if it's something I have it for the budget, um, if it is something that we are able to move forward on for the archiving portion of my office, um, I could get with the schools. And with the trailer being here, there's a plexiglass the kids could watch come as, you know, first grade, bring the class, and they can see how they're preserving those old books. So it'd be something that, you know, would be a possibility to have them be a part of it. Um, so we have a lot of crazy things all at once going on, and I just wanted to give you a heads up on those things so you know. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks. I have a question for uh, Ted. Back to item one, Ted, on the PO system. <clears throat> Should I abs abstain from that for the simple fact that my employer submitted they submit quotes for purchase orders from Lander County. Would it be considered a conflict of interest for me to vote on that item and should we reopen it? Um, should I abstain from that? The more that I look at it, I can see how it could be construed as a conflict of interest. Well, I don't know if it's a direct conflict of interest. It's more like, do you feel you can be objective on that? Or do you feel... I would feel better if I just, if we reopen it, Most conflicts are personal things. Yeah. Only the person can determine if, if they yeah. can remain objective or not. Yeah. Number one, if we could reopen that, I'd be and, and before we do that, Madam Chair, uh, after the meeting is concluded, we need to have a litigation meeting. And there are three parts to it. And I would ask permission to allow the sheriff, who's in attendance today, to be at uh, one of those parts about a lawsuit on the Red Playhouse. And he has information uh, on that and, and some thoughts on that. Okay. So if, if that's all right, yeah. you may. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and reopen number one for possible action to approve, disapprove, and abolish of the purchase <coughs> system within Lander County. Yeah. And I just wanted to state that in, in the relationship that my employer has with Lander County, quotes are submitted for purchase orders, and I just, I need to abstain from that. Okay. I don't want to. Have a voice and vote on that. Thank you. Marcus, your thing is not on. So, if you want to repeat. Uh, yeah, so I just I asked for it to be reopened uh, just for the simple fact that the relationship between my employer and the county uh, quotes are submitted for purchase orders, and I feel that it's a, I mean, it's a conflict of interest, so I want to abstain from that. Okay. So I'll make a motion that, that we. Well, now. I have to pull those back out. Did we pay? No, this is on the purchase orders, not the check. Just the purchase this orders? This is on the purchase, purchase orders. Oh, one. okay. Agenda number one, yeah. item number one. Okay. We're just going to so redo this. Redo the so that the oh. doesn't vote. It's the same thing. Okay, so I'll make a motion that we, we approve the abolishment of the purchase order system within Lander County. Um, and this is a second go around so that one of our commissioners can abstain. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. And I abstain. <coughs> and I vote nay. Passes with three. There we go. All right. So we can pass. That's all good. We can go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. <coughs> Okay. Aye. 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 Aye.